Sam and Sonia have been lawyers for a long time. Sam uh, has been a lawyer for 39 years, Sonia for 29 years. Now, with their talents and abilities, they could have chosen to go into the more lucrative part of the law, the Wall Street law. Instead, they chose the more important part of the law, the human rights law, defending the downtrodden and the oppressed and the people who needed help. They have a long list of achievements, and among other things, Sam is a past president of the ACLU of Southern California. But when Sam started his first law firm, it was a collective, and all the attorneys and the staff people shared the same income. And they, once a year, they each had a, a, a vacation at the expense of the firm. Now, that has been a long road from there to the point where Clinton uh, nominated Sam to the federal bench. Unfortunately, Orrin Hatch uh, stopped that because he would rather have an obedient servant of business uh, on the federal bench than a human rights lawyer. However, Sam and Sonia have continued that. I'm so happy to be here because I'll be able to say a few words uh, about uh, Sonia Mercado. And I just want to say, you know, when we think of the prison industrial complex, okay? Let's say it the way that it is. The prison industrial complex and the power of police in our society that we also have, we live in a system of oppression as we know. Young men of color especially are getting brutalized, arrested, just coming over here. They had a young black man against the wall here in Hollywood. And last time I was in Hollywood, there was a young Guatemalan woman who was trying to sell some food. She had like five police cars. And they took her away and they arrested her because she was selling food there on the corner of Hollywood and buying. And you know, we see this suppression going on all the time. And you know, we really have to thank the people that have the courage to stand up for it. And so I am so honored that I was asked you know, to be here to say a few words about Sonia Mercado. We know that Sonia has just been very, very successful with a seven-year-long battle, and that was in her suit against the sheriff of Los Angeles, Mr. Baca, right? For the kind of uh, violent uh, brutality uh, that, and, and I say this because I have known people that have been in that jail, and they have told me of the way that many of the prisoners are really brutalized in that, in that prison. I'm talking about first-hand accounts, you know, of people that have told me this. And I know it took a long time to make it happen, but we have to say, uh, I, you know, thank you very much to this great organization for recognizing both Sonia and Sam. And we know that it always takes two, right? Side by side uh, to do the work that needs to, uh, the work of, of uh, progressive and of liberty and of civil rights to make it happen. And so, Sonia, you have really, uh, you have really, really been an inspiration to us not to give up to keep on organizing, to keep on fighting, and for all of the other work that she has done. So anyway, muchas gracias, Sonia. Que viva, Sonia. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, it's really an honor to be here, and I, it's tough to follow Dolores Huerta. I'm sorry. She's like who I'm going to be when I grow up. I also want to thank Aris for making it sound like I've done great stuff. Above all, I want to make three comments. I want to talk about our own collective memory. I want to talk about our shared consciousness. And I want to talk about how we are the instruments for change. And when I say we, I mean every single one of us here. We do not take the fire out of any one of us who struggles for justice, Whenever any one of us wins, we all win. When the ACLU wins a fight, I'm home rooting. I feel like I just won something great. When a colleague of mine gets a verdict, I feel I got it. And the reason we feel that way is because we stand on each other's shoulders and we stand next to each other. And my husband always stands next to me and that's why I married him. <laughs> Our collective memory is shown in the poster and literature and art that our society puts forward. 
And that collective memory is what we can pass on to our children. All of us are inspired by each other. We come here to sort of give each other a good warm hand. Uh, most of the time, I feel that I'm not awarded or rewarded for a lot of the work I do. And coming here, it's like coming to a Jesus moment, coming to church or something, <laughs> where you really feel people understand why we struggle as we struggle. I am moved most, more than anything, and I think my husband, who's always worked with me, and Mark, share, and that is the courage of our clients. Those are the people who really inspire us through their adversity. You know, when a client comes to you and you say, wow, I got a great case, you're talking about one of the most devastating, saddest moment of some mom who had a bipolar child who died in custody because he was not given a couple of pills that he needed to get over. You're talking about a mom or a wife whose husband lost his leg in jail because he was put on a bed for two weeks, left unattended, and ended up with gangrene. So when we speak of a case that we need to take on, we're talking about taking on a constitutional issue that absolutely somebody has to take. That courage comes from our clients, and we're really beholden on to them for letting us represent them. We're nothing but messengers. Um, we're nothing but people who stand here today on the shoulders of the ACLU, on the shoulders of this organization, and the shoulders of many others doing work that we actually a lot of times have a lot of fun doing. Even though we're doing it at 4 o'clock in the morning, we share great jokes as well. And I think that the important thing that we always try to remember is that as I look out and I feel bad or I feel down, I look to you to lift me up, and you usually do. And I look to my colleagues to help me feel better. And when I feel, God, that was a good job, we won that case, I look to you and I feel humbled because you've been doing it for a long time. Thank you for this honor, and thank you for recognizing our work, and thank you to Aris for all the great work he's done, and thank you to Dolores Huerta. I'm gonna grow up to be just like her. Thank you. My first uh, meeting with Sonia, uh, we met in, in 93, short for a brief period of time when I was uh, nominated for the bench and I was closing my practice. And, and uh, on the day that uh, I, I withdrew my nomination after um, the Senate became a Republican. Uh, I called, or no, Sonia called me and said, hey, um, and as I said, yes, this is me, and she said, well, hey, I hear you lost a job and you need a job. <laughs> so um, she told me about Antonio Mendoza, the case involving the, the gentleman that, was, um, that uh, lost his leg to gangrene, and it, I hadn't worked in about 18 months, so it was, uh, it was a godsend. And, um, I was just about out of money and out of patience, and so it was great to get back to work. Uh, I, um, the good part about the case was that we won, and it was a very handsome uh, settlement. Uh, and it began a wonderful journey that uh, we've, we've continued. We did approximately 30 cases against jails and prisons in the last uh, 19 years. Uh, and Sonia has been a wonderful, wonderful person who, who I just, uh, she has, I just thank her for her love, uh, her passion, for keeping me going when I'm down, and for her guidance, and above all, her energy to put up with me. We, um, uh, us, us lonely few civil rights lawyers, uh, are th the last step uh, a person has uh, when someone is killed or hurt by the police or in jail. Uh, the, the honest uh, fact is that most departments still go into cover-up mode when somebody is seriously injured or dead. Um, most uh, district attorneys uh, don't have the chutzpah to, uh, to bring a case against uh, even criminal, even serious criminal conduct by police officers. And so there's about 500 of us that belong to a group called the National Police Accountability Project, started by the Lawyers Guild uh, many years ago. Uh, with the advent of the list and uh, in, 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 uh, internet, We've been able now to, to grow to 500 people, 500 civil rights lawyers around the country. And I'm very proud of uh, our achievement, and I say Sonia and I, because uh, one of the things that we started doing uh, with Antonio Mendoza in 1995, and 
thereafter was do cases that really no one else wanted. Nobody wanted to do the headache that it takes to sue a jail. Everything happens behind closed doors. Everything is hidden, secret, confidential, and the government closes up. They hire the best lawyers, and there's just us. And we are, uh, for most people, the last resort. We are the only institution in the United States that opens the doors to the brutality and, that exists in the jails. And we are the only people that have gone after uh, people like Sheriff Baca in his personal capacity uh, to make sure that when another sheriff comes in, they're gonna think a little bit about uh, taking the line of, of, a, of a, an approach and say, I didn't know what was happening in my jail. Duh, you're only, you're, you're only required by state law to take care of the jail, right? But I didn't know what was happening. Well, uh, we don't have to put up with that kind of BS anymore. We hope that my colleagues and I, I hope that my colleagues and, and, and the rest of us uh, continue on the road of trying to bring some sanity uh, to these, these um, leaders of, of these police departments and jails so that they understand that they can be responsible and we can hold them responsible. Uh, it is our duty to keep freedom alive in this country and the freedom that is, has throughout historically has always been that of the government to take away the, the power of a person to be free and put them in jails. So I thank you very much for this award. It's very, very humbling and, and very, uh, it's, it's just terrific. Uh, not too many folks care about the work we do or know about the work we do. Uh, but those of you who are in this room, I think, appreciate it. Thank you.